the Three Phase Innovations videos. Uh, today we're going to talk about a corner grounded delta because there was a lot of requests for this type of bank. It's an older bank, but it does exist still out there in the field. Before we do that though, we want to talk a little bit about some terminology about grounding, neutral, and just having a conductor at a ground attachment. When you're in a three wire delta, you have an ungrounded delta. No reference to neutral or ground. This is a three wire. You're going to get one voltage in a delta phase to phase all the way around it. Whether it be a 240 or 480, that's what's the voltage that will exist in that delta body. In some books, you might see something that says solidly grounded. Okay? This means that you are tied to the grounder. You could then, if you had a neutral here, have a four wire delta. The beauty about a delta is you can put one neutral in it. Just one, but you can put one in it. Where you put that neutral determines what kind of voltages you're going to get out of that bank. If you center tap it, then you're going to have some 120, maybe some 240, and you're going to have a high leg in it. Now, some books are just going to say grounded, and there is a terminology that says you're tied to ground still. But this may have an impedance value or a resistor built within the circuit, so when you do have a fault, it's going to limit your fault current and protect your devices a little better. So there may be a little difference between grounded and solidly grounded. The one we're going to talk about though today is called a corner ground delta. Instead of center tapping this bank, we are going to put one ground, or one phase, pardon me, to a ground potential. Okay, we're not going to put it to a neutral but one phase will be grounded on the corner of that delta. So with that being said, the next step, we're gonna go over here to the model, and I'll show you the little difference between a three wire and four wire delta, and we'll continue from there. Welcome back, uh, like I said, we can come to the model here. As you can see, our breakers above the transformers, green indicates power to the phase, red indicates that the bank is closed. So, or being back Coming down here, you can see that we have our equipment grounds. Okay, since this is a two bushing high side transformer, this is nearly an equipment ground. It's only going to carry current in the case of this can accidentally becoming energized. It's going to give it a place to go to trip out, okay, or float the ground. The bank itself. We've got a four bushing secondary. We've got all our copper straps off on every transformer, okay? We did hook them in series. These transformers right here are rated for 120, 240 volts. As Vince goes around, there's no reference to ground in this bank. A three wire delta once again. So looking at our schematic, just looking at the secondary side, which we're focused on, A, B, C, delta connection, there's no neutral yet in this bank. We should just get zero potential on any phase of ground, and we get 240 on each phase to phase. Let's see if that's true with our voltage. A to B, 241B to C, 240.9A to C. Now, I said uh, earlier, every circuit, it's inherent. It has a capacitive charge to ground. We just said that this three-wire delta has no neutral in it. If we were to read phase to ground, what would our readings be? 13. So how is that possible? Again, the electrical circuit does have a natural capacitance to ground. But if you'll notice these meters now, this is a meter with high impedance in it. That's what voltmeters do. If you will put it on the low Z setting, and we check our phase ground voltage again, you can see that there truly is no electrical pressure 
page to ground, the meter corrected it for us. If you were to use the Wiggy meter, you would see the same thing. This meter allows current to flow through the meter. If I went phase to phase again, it rings, it vibrates, it let me know I have pressure. If I went phase to ground, nothing. Okay? So what we're going to do now is remember we said this is a corner ground and delta video. Sonny, this phase right here, we are going to take that phase and put it to a ground potential. That's going to be where our one neutral is going to be located. This is sometimes called a V-phase grounded system, or it's just called a corner ground. Okay, now we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and wire this up, and we'll come back to our model and see what our voltage readings will be now. Alright guys, we've taken a three-wire delta, and as you can see, I have put a neutral in it now right here on B phase, right down to a, to a neutral or a ground. What I have actually done to this phase is put it at a ground potential. That's all I've done. We have a four wire delta now. This will change our voltages. This is where the confusion sometimes comes in with whether it be linemen or electricians. I'm coming to read my voltages now. Phase to phase, we're still at 241, 240, and 241. Now remember in the three wire delta, we still had a capacitance that was being a straight or phantom voltage phase to neutral. But with that grounded, you will now read from A to the, the ground, still 240. C to ground is still 241. But if you'll notice now, B still has a little capacitance voltage, but if I put it on the low Z setting, it'll give me my true reading. B to neutral is now zero. A lot of times an electrician or somebody will tell you now, if they read this in a breaker box, they think they've lost a phase. So this is where a corner ground and delta can get a little tricky because everyone sees that zero and a million assumes a phase has gone out. But that's not the case. For lime in this bank, here's where you're gonna find immediately if you've got a corner ground of delta right at the bank. This B phase, due to NEC code, would have to be labeled from here all the way throughout the building. That B phase now is the phase that has ground potential on it, okay? So this is very important to know this when you're looking at your if you see this ground or this neutral, we'll call it a potential to ground for a phase, you've got a corner ground to delta. So the phase that's grounded to neutral will read zero. But everything else will still read 240 volts. I guess what we'll do now is there's some advantages and disadvantages to this type of bank. Uh, we'll come back section by itself. Back to our corner ground and delta bank. We did put this in our book and there was a lot of requests to this bank because it's kind of not seen a lot. Okay? So again for alignment looking up at the pole you've got a phase grounded here. Now if this phase is grounded um, it's going to be very easy for alignment to see what kind of bank he has. Um, some of the advantages and disadvantages we'll get into. First, let's just talk about the troubleshooting aspect for the lineman here. If this was not grounded, if you have just a regular three-wire delta, a phase could become grounded inside that building and no one would ever know because you can have one existing neutral or ground in a delta. Now, these factories will have warning lights and stuff maybe to indicate that they do have a problem, but troubleshooting it is still going to be common because now you have to find out where that problem is. With this grounding, I've already decided to put a phase to a ground, so now if I do have a fault inside that building, you're going to know about it. It will probably shut something down, but you'll have to immediately... This would disrupt 
the service. If it wasn't grounded, it wouldn't disrupt the service. The service that was one of the advantages of it. You can still keep it going even though and, and fix the fault later. Um, some of the other advantages this bank has, it would stabilize the other two phases that are not grounded. It stabilizes their voltage to ground. Okay. Um, it's also a cheap way, back in the 40s, maybe World War II times, like I said, uh, you could save copper. You have a 240 appliance, well, you can get it off just one phase of the ground. Okay. Modern days, you're probably going to be running at least two hot legs for that. Um, some of the disadvantages. This bank really doesn't have much modern use. Okay, There's much better banks that kind of took its place. Um, the problem here is if I have a corner grounded the delta, I can't center tap it. I can't get no new voltages out of it because, again, that would be putting more grounds in. Um, if you do this and it is a corner grounded delta, it has to be identified all the way through the building. Everybody's got to know exactly what phase it has got potential ground on. Um, talking a little bit about experience and why we designed a model like this, the word itself means to gain knowledge by the act of doing. And this is kind of like a hands-on trainer where you can actually see a bank like this that doesn't even exist in the field that much, but you still can build it here all day long and learn about it. Um, I go back to the old Ben Franklin quote, you uh, tell me something, I may forget it. You teach me, I may remember. But if you involve me in something, I'm going to learn. And so that's the whole goal of what we try to do here. Um, you can check us out on our trans uh, Lyman Transformer discussion page on Facebook. And share your experiences as well. Because that way we all get to learn from each other. Thank you.